Hi everyone, this is John Garrett from hypertransitory.com and uh, this is part two of my 3D character design uh, and scene design for my online novel uh, True Tales of the Saurian Order and uh, for this I use Daz Studio and also Photoshop and if you saw last time we, we started setting up this this character uh, and I showed you the exact uh, props and uh, model that I used and we got the, uh, the clothing and the objects in there so um, let's move over to Daz and continue where we left off and we're going to start with uh, doing some color and also the materials, the textures for those objects. So here we go. All right, so we've got her in here and um, what we need to do is you know, start adding some color and texture to her. Uh, I think there's a couple things here to fix first. Uh, if I look at the torso. I'm pressing here, this button is going to kind of zoom up for me, and I can zoom up more. We can see that that's not quite fitting right. Sometimes when you cobble together a bunch of pieces that really aren't necessarily meant to work together, you get what's called poke through. That's what we're seeing here um, in this torso area. Uh, sometimes there's not much you can do. You know, if, if it's somewhere where it's not going to be seen, don't worry about it, obviously. But obviously this is the front, so I'm going to have to try to fix that by scaling it up a little bit. And, um, you know, I think for what I need, this is going to be fine. Let's try to move that a little bit. All right. You know, that should be fine for what I need for now. I mean, I see a little bit here, but, but that should be okay. And we've got this shirt area here that we need to scale up a little bit to get rid of that poke through. So that finished that. Let's zoom up over here. And, you know, you have to make the call on whether or not it's worth it to worry about. Is it, is it going to be seen? Can you pose the character in such a way that that it won't matter? Um, if you can get away with it, then, then I wouldn't worry about it. But I'm going to go ahead and scale that up. That should be fine for now. All right, with that done, it's time to do some coloring. And um, as we saw from the picture, I'm not... Uh, I'm not really looking for a, a realistic type of style. This is more illustrative and, you know, kind of artsy looking. So as you might imagine, um, I'm using the cartoon setting in here and in my render settings, you want to make sure this is set on cartoon. So um, what's going to happen then is that it's going to come out a lot flatter looking than normal than you would normally get from a, from a normal render, which is what that's called normal or cartoon so um, and the way I do that is kind of different from a lot of people there there's plugins that do cartooning like in one click and I, I actually think I have all those plugins that do it but I didn't like the results and a lot of times it kind of didn't work I would get you know a black figure or something would just turn black and I start reading the the facts and reading reading the, the help files and you know I really don't want to go through all that just to get it working so uh, I kind of cobbled together my own method using a bunch of other tutorials, you know, from like four or five different people who were doing things. And I, I kind of cobbled my own way together. And that way is to use the ambient channel um, in my surfaces. Like normally all this stuff is, is in what's called the diffuse channel. So I kind of don't use that. I use the ambient channel and it gets me some very flat colors that then I can then modify in Photoshop. And then part of the key to that is to use the distant light, which uh, unlike a spotlight, you know, it's going to shine on what you pointed at. The distant light is going to light up everything and it doesn't really matter where you put that light. What does matter is the angle of the light. You know, sometimes you can't really see the stuff. I might make a background color or something so we can see better you know what's going on there let's make that a little bit darker all right so now you can see that light I could change the direction of it if I wanted to by rotating but for now it's going straight on and um, you know we can see it's pointing right at the rays are coming parallel right at the model so that's fine for now all right so if we look at the picture um, this suit is green and it's got some texturing to it. Let's start with that and um, get back here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose her bodysuit, which is over here. 
And a lot of times when you have a, a texture for an object, a lot of times that's found in the pose area. So I'm going to go there and I need to find um, Victoria 4, who's our stock model, and her bodysuit. And these are her materials for her bodysuit. And you can have your own setup if you want. I mean, mine is not very organized, but it's organized for me. I mean, you have to have your own way to organize. But but uh, what I'm going to do now is apply this matte texture to the bodysuit. So we can see now that it, you know, it's kind of modeled instead of being instead of being very smooth, um, which is what I wanted. And then I need to change the color on that. And to change the color on it, um, I'm not going to select it over here, but I'm going to go to my surfaces tab. Let's collapse everything here. And I'm going to click on this bodysuit. So here is where I'm going to change the color of it. And with my method, as I said, I don't use diffuse. I don't use specular. I use ambient. So I want to turn these off. You know, diffuse is at zero now. Specular is at zero. And the glossiness on specular controls the hardness of the, of the specular highlight. So zero glossiness is going to be a very hard highlight and you know 100 is going to be a very soft edged highlight. And I'm going to scroll down here to my ambient and what I'm going to do is put this texture in the ambient channel. So I need to take note of what this is. 01 V4 and I'm going to have to find that and here it is. Sometimes it does that multiple things so I always choose it twice. Now um, my ambient is at 100%, but it's it's black, so that's why I got black here. Now I want to change that to a green, so I'm going to click on on this bar here. What you should be able to do, if you were to right click on this number, you should be able to type in the numbers you want. But every time I do that, it crashes, at least on the Mac. So I would recommend not doing that. Click on this bar, and I've got a couple of colors saved here. Uh, I have that green saved, but let's say that I didn't. I mean, I can either start in this first a color wheel here and then move around and pick a color that I want. If you have a specific color, you can click on the color sliders and you got a bunch of, of them here and I picked the RGB and I happen to, to know that that one uh, for the bodysuit here is, is going to be, uh, let's see, 104. So that's going to give me the green I want, which I've already saved. So let's say I did want to save that again. You have to click in this bar and drag it down there to the square. So now it's saved. Saved in there. And you can always go back to it. And if I, you know, I click on this and I want to pick that color again or I pick something else, well now I want to go back to it, you know, I can always pick that color back up. And the only way I found to get rid of these colors, let's say you start filling these up and you need some more, um, I don't know, I couldn't find a way to do it except to take the next color and drag it right on top of it. And then I, they're all white again. You know, if I pick on these, it's going to be white. But I want green. So now she's got a green suit. And I'll tell you another thing I noticed here is when I'm working in in uh, ambient, and let's say that I want um, I want to see these textures, I can't really see them in the ambient too well. You know, if I turn this texture off and get rid of it, now I've just got this. And it may not matter to you. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. But I, I kind of like to have that texture in there. So I keep it in there. But sometimes uh, this texture will multiply into your render. So you got to be careful about that. Um, if you don't care about that. Sometimes it adds to the effect. Sometimes it doesn't. I might keep it in there up until render time. Just so I can see what I'm doing. What's going on. And then take it out at the last minute. And then render. But that's just to let you know that that is going to happen when you render this. This is going to compound into your render. So be careful with that. Uh, another way, though, that I've done things, obviously I've already done this picture. So I went and I did save the um, presets for my surfaces. And the way you do that, if I were to click on, let's say, the boots, and I want to save the uh, the presets for these boots, I would then go to File, Save As, and I would save as Material Preset. So whatever I have selected over here is going to be saved. All my presets for my materials and colors are going to be saved for that. And I, I can choose certain parts of it if I want to, but in this case I would want all of them. 
So I would save that and what happens when you want to save that is you need to save it into your scripts folder uh, wherever that is. So I, I've actually put mine over here in the sidebar but but I could uh, then save it in here as whatever name I want as a DSB and Daz is going to load that as a script when it's time. So I have these boots selected and as we can see that in the in the picture you know there's a little bit of coloring here with these boots so what I need to do is find my scripts folder over here in the content tab I'm gonna go all the way back up here studio 3 and this is where my scripts folder is and I'm gonna find the boots on that I'm gonna double click my material preset here and as you can see that all changed and if you've got the same character, you need to put them in a bunch of different scenes, then that's going to be a lifesaver for you. Uh, you know, assuming you don't merge the character in, but if you, you know, if you have to start over for whatever reason, you can always have the stuff saved and um, not have to go through all these sliders over and over again. And uh, you can also save poses that way too. And if you look in here, I do have my pose saved in here that I can I can do fairly quickly. So let me just go through here and put maybe her hair in here as well. Um, there it is. And there's her red hair going on there. So that's a quick way. I mean, you really want to take advantage of that if you can. Um, I mean, there's really no reason you can't. You can. Um, you don't know when you're going to need them again. Sometimes I've had situation where Daz has corrupted a certain file and it's it's unfortunate but it happens uh, you try to open a file and it's you can't get it again you can't merge the character in you got to start over you can always have your scripts ready to go if that happens so you know as long as you still have the props and everything which you should still have in your folder you can always rebuild that character get them you know colored and materialed up all over again without having to deal with um, the rigmarole and trying to remember what you did and especially you can save that pose and if you want to, you can save you can save a whole character preset. You can see all the different types of presets you got. You can save the whole kit and caboodle. Um, but I believe you have to have the surfaces selected for that. I don't think I've ever done that. I usually save it a piece at a time because I work better that way. But you know, it's up to you how you're going to do it. But I can go through and then recolor this this character really quickly and get her ready for posing. And I think that's what I'm going to do now is just go through and get that set up. And the next thing we're going to talk about is how um, I'm going to get my shadowing. Now, I'm not going to use spotlights or use uh, turn on any of the, the, the shadow options that you might normally find. Like if I click on the distant lights and I look at my parameters down here, it's going to ask me what type of shadow type I want. Where I'm not going to, I'm not going to mess with those because those are going to drastically increase my render times. And I really don't need it for the effect that I'm looking for. So I'm going to show you another way that I get my shadows um, for these for these illustrations to um, to kind of get it looking like this. And that's what I'm going to go through next time. And just make sure that uh, if you have any questions, you can always you know message me at my site or or leave comment here, and I can go into things in in more detail uh, if that's what you need. But uh, look out for the next one, and I'm going to start going into the shadowing on this character and then we'll see after that we should be able to move into Photoshop and get the whole scene ready to go. Thanks for watching.